Hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to be doing a wrap up of um, the last chunk of the books that I read. Um, I'm using this week as still last month, but um, I just wanted to kind of get where I'm going here with what I'm reading because um, I have a big TBR for next month. And um, I kind of want to get into it as soon as I can. Um, and some of these I've already done review videos for, so um, I'm not going to get too much into it. But out of the um, wrestling books that I read, um, the King of New Orleans book about Junkyard Dog and everything, um, I already did a video on that, so you could find that um and i finished the gary hart book um my life in wrestling with a little help from my friends this book is excellent and if you want to know about booking professional wrestling or um more of the business end of stuff and then also a bunch of stuff about Gary Hart and the people he worked with. If you want to know about, um, world-class championship wrestling, um, the Von Eriks, uh, this book is just so good. And, um, there's a lot of stuff about Bruiser Brody in it. Um, just some great stuff. So highly recommend if you're into wrestling biographies. Now I know this book is out of print, this book is um, quite expensive if you're trying to find the book itself. Um, I, you can find um, PDFs and ebook versions of this book for nothing online with just a little bit of Googling. Hopefully, someone will put this book out again um, because it is just top-notch um, wrestling history book. Um, House of Flesh, I read by Bruno Fisher. Five-star, go read it. Um, Fires That Destroy by Harry Winnington. Um, this one was... I'm going to do a video on this one, too. But um, this was very strange because it was a... Um, noir crime mystery no 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 mystery there's no mystery here just a crime novel but um it's told from the point of view of a girl of a woman um a woman who um really looks at herself as a plain jane and um it's about this woman who um works for a blind businessman and is like his live-in private secretary. And um, she finds out he has some cash in the house. And um, she kills him. And I'm not, like, this is about, this is the thing about Harry Winnington. Like, the book opens up with her standing on the stairs, looking down at his dead body. So, um, like... Harry just gets in there, guys. Um, so this was a really good book. Um, it's better now stepping away from it. Like, I keep thinking about it. When I first finished it, I was like, do I really like this book? Um, but yeah, so it's about um, that and this detective who doesn't believe her story whatsoever. But, it, like, no matter what he does, he can't pin the crime on her yet um and then the book takes a turn and um i don't know again i the introduction to this book i think um oversold it a little bit but um anyhow it's a very good um story and one that i wasn't expecting when it was told from a female perspective um the other thing I'll say about this is that, like, no one in this book is likable. 
So if you need to have likable characters in a book, this is not the book for you. No one in this book is likable. Not a single person. Not the cop, not the lady, not the blind man. Um, nobody. Like, it was just a book of a bunch of unlikable people. And that's that's difficult. The book has to be written really well in order for that to get over with me. And now the one you've been waiting for. Because I know the only reason why you watch this channel is to figure out if I liked Satan was a lesbian or not. <clears throat> I'm sorry to tell you guys, this book is pretty much hot trash, okay? Um, like, this is a book that I wanted to stop reading immediately. Like, not immediately, but like, there's just nothing in this book. Like, there's this chick who kind of has a chip on her shoulder. She um, hooks up with girls and is kind of a bitch about it. I'm not trying to sound horrible, but like... Every time she's about to hook up with a girl, she, like, punches her in the face or kicks her in the head or, like, hurts her somehow. It's really weird. And then there's these two other chicks that are, like, they keep, like, catching her and, like, tying her up and beating her up and then hooking up with her. And then they think everything's cool and they, like, untie her and they hook up a little bit more. And then the main character, like, beats the shit out of them and, like, burns their clothes and, like, chases them with a car. I'm kind of exaggerating here. And then she goes to do something else, hooks up with some other girl, and then the the two baddies come back. And it's just, like, this never-ending cycle. And, um, like... I don't understand it. And again, like, you might go, well, you know, maybe back in the 60s, people didn't understand that lesbians are just like everybody else. And, you know, they were just... And, and I'm like, I don't know. Like, everyone in this book is kind of an asshole and kind of a piece of shit. And the only person that has any kind of depth is the main character. And her depth isn't even that deep. It's like, we're still in a waiting pool here. Like, I don't know. And then, like, I was just, this book is, like, and this was another book, like, I could only read a little bit at a time. And um, everyone, oh, this is driving me crazy. Um, everyone was calling each other darling. Oh, darling. Oh, it's okay, darling. Oh, darling. The darling. So, like, all the characters are using the same, um, like, pet name. And then, like, the baddies are like, oh, darling. But then the good guys are like, oh, darling. And it's just like, what, like, the only way, like, you could differentiate between the characters is, like, you mentally putting different emphasis is oh god I can't even talk right now on darling and it was it was like mind numbingly bad and so I'm just like trying to get through this thing and every two seconds there's action and I'm just like kind of skimming through it trying to get to like the next time someone's going to pop up in the backseat of a car and try to kill somebody and then fire <laughs> <laughs> this book is so ridiculous. So then, like, I'm going to ruin it for you. Just because I don't give a shit anymore. So, <laughs> they're trying to get away. Um, the main chick and the, like, love interest for her. They're trying to get away from some people. And they're speeding. Which brings us back to the beginning of the book. And the first scene. So there is a little bit of foreshadowing. And a little... So, like good storytelling there um and they're talking and they're like oh wow you're going 90 miles an hour she's like yeah i'm going fast oh and then like her eyes get wide and they smash into a concrete wall and then it's like 
has those little dots in between paragraphs so you know like some time has passed and then it's like a paragraph from the paramedics <laughs> yep those are two dead women uh-huh and that's the end of the book jesus christ like ah oh, it it's like um a really awkward way like, you know, in the movie Psycho, like, you watch the movie and the whole movie's going on. And then at the end, they have, like, a psychiatrist come out to explain everything that you just saw. Um, just so you know that, like, this person has problems. And it's, like, kind of like one of those um, white coat movies back in the day, like, you probably don't know what I'm talking about unless you're Steve or Mark. But, like, they used to do this thing back in the day where they wanted to make pornography, but they knew pornography was illegal. So, at the beginning of the movie, they would have, like, someone, at, like, in some awful set that's supposed to look like a doctor's office or a schoolroom or, um an exam room and it's just like some dude they pulled off the street they put a white lab coat on him and he's like i'm a doctor and um the things you're about to see are very scientific uh the the mating ritual between a male and a female of any species especially uh homo sapiens uh, and they do all this thing and then at the end of it it's like and that's why you don't have premarital sex or something like that um and like this book is just so stupid and when um that little bit with just like you know if you're a lesbian paramedics are gonna say well those are a couple of dead ladies right there it, it was just so stupid i started laughing out loud and so like that little paragraph at the end made the book worth it worth all the time of um hell on earth trying to get through it but it was just so ridiculous like ugh. i don't know like hopefully you can see the humor with me but i'm just picturing like two dudes like smoking a cigarette man those are a couple of dead women oh what are you gonna do tonight bill i don't know bob i was thinking of getting a burger maybe beer maybe going out to the picture show but mm, what do we do now i don't know why don't we cover the what's left of these up with a cloth and sit here and smoke in the rain in our white polyester outfits like the whole thing was just ridiculous and i was just cracking up um so yeah that book almost ended up on the chopping block but um thank heaven for my um need to finish reading that book and i don't know if i said it in the last video and i'll post a picture of it right here um some company made an action figure of the devil from the book cover and um it, this is like one of the most amazing things i've ever seen and um i don't know if it's um i'm sure it's real it was on the internet um but that just cracked me up. So this is um, something that definitely I need to find men on card and um, pin up somewhere. But anyway, so the book I'm reading currently is um, River Girl by Charles Williams. Uh, this is a book that is paced perfectly so far. Um, I'm almost halfway through it. And it is just, like, there There was one down moment where um, he's talking about fishing and um, the different things that happen when you fish and ways to, and, like, it was boring the shit out of me for, like, a couple minutes. Um, and I, I, I would love to go out and go fishing. But this was just a little much. Um, but there are a couple of um, little things 
like real quick rundown there's this cop that's kind of a crooked cop but he's a crooked cop because his boss is crooked and he has to go do the things that the cop asks him to do there's a preacher in town who's tired of all the whorehouses and gambling joints in the town and wants the cops to shut him down and he's the preacher's probably gonna run for sheriff against the sheriff or whatever um the cop jack our friend the guy we follow um he's in a marriage that he doesn't want to be in anymore his wife is spending money faster than he can make it which makes him feel like he needs to be kind of a crooked cop um and finally he was just like you know what like she's like i'm leaving i'm gonna go to the beach for a week with so and so and he's like good get out i'm gonna go fishing i haven't been fishing all summer i'm going fishing so he goes fishing um it, to this place that's kind of far away um and he like is in his boat has to go like 20 miles out um into this lake to find like the perfect fishing spot and um like you do he sees a woman and um falls head over heels for her, um who lives in a weird little shack out in the middle of nowhere um and everything's cool or whatever it's not cool it's not cool at all like things are getting crazy but like i'm like kind of halfway through the book and then she's like yeah, I just keep remembering that time when we were kids and you used to, like, fuck with me. And and he's like, what? And she's like, did you not recognize me? I recognized you right off. And I'm like, wait a second here. So they know each other? And he's like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, what? And, like, hopefully this has some other payoff, or else I'm going to be very critical of this book. But this is such a ridiculous thing to drop into a book halfway through the book, that not only are they planning on running away together, but they know each other from, like, years ago. I don't know. So that part has me on the fence a little bit. But so far the book has been just oh it's so good and it's so much better than hill girl which um was his first um i think that was his first novel charles williams um hill girl just drags um but this one is like very different like the pace of it is it's like it's almost like and Hill Girl's a good book. It's just slow as shit and nothing happens. Um, and some of you are like, you're fucking nuts. Hill Girl's fucking great. And let me know down below if you think that. But anyway, so... Um, but yeah, so that is my wrap-up. And um, let me know down below if you've read any of these books. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel and click that little bell for notifications. Um, give me a thumbs up because you like it and then leave me a comment because I asked you to. And now I know all the things you're supposed to say at the end of a YouTube video. So until next time, everybody, goodbye.